Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hello Star Wars listening folks, welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast, and happy Destiny Friday. So as we march ever closer to the release of Unlikely Heroes in mid-November, some pretty substantial milestones are going to happen. Last week we talked about the first uh, reiteration or reworking of the Air Age Legal reprint list uh, happening, and obviously that's significant. But what's perhaps more, maybe not more impactful, but more significant from a milestone standpoint is the rotation of Convergence as a set out, uh, right? It'll be getting bumped out as ARH4 comes in. So tonight what I wanted to look at was kind of the, the impact of Convergence rotating out, what that means, what we might see get added back to the reprint list from Convergence, and so on. Hey folks, thanks for tuning back in this morning. So kicking this off with kind of an interesting little discussion, I am, I'm curious to know what you guys think as well, right? So I'd kind of alluded to the fact that I think the reprint list change is probably more impactful overall, uh, but that's not to undersell the fact that Convergence as itself, rotating out is also pretty impactful, right? So, you know, in terms of what's more impactful, you know, reworking stuff like, I mean, if you look at what's being played in the meta right now, it's significantly driven by the reprint list. Um, but again, losing that foundational corner of the convergence block is, is a big deal, right? And, you know, why is losing one's, I mean, you know, why is losing one set more impactful than, you know, why is losing convergence more impactful than losing any of the other sets? I mean, the answer there is pretty clear, right? When they were des designed as, when convergence, spark of hope and covert missions, were designed, they were designed as a block, meaning that Convergence fed in a lot of the fundamental things, right? It kicked off downgrades and, you know, it also really kicked off subtypes. Not not really, it did kick off subtypes, right? I mean, that was the, you know, they had gone back and given subtypes before, but that was really the first set. That was our, our tribal set, right? Our tribal kickoff. So we lose a lot of staples there. So obviously as part of tonight's discussion on, you know, the impacts of stuff leaving, um, you know, I, I think there's going to be a fair amount of stuff from Convergence that is that is needed. Um, you know, and specifically kind of to get us in the right headspace there, or at least, you know, put into context, you know, we, we've talked, I think, in several casts already, stuff that's been on here about, you know, the leader keyword. I mean, it's, it's long been, like literally for like two plus years, it's long been considered, leader has long been considered to be one of the most impactful keywords, right? Probably followed by Trooper, prob probably, right? But... And in terms of that, I, maybe Jedi. I mean, either way, but leader certainly has carried weight, right? Whether it just be something like Assault Flats or a Mega Blaster Troopers or even just one of the other various cards, it's always been kind of that, oh, man, they're a leader. And, you know, without with a lot of the stuff in Convergence rotating out, if it doesn't come back, you can really start to question, you know, how good is, is leader, you know, not, not how good is, it's still going to be good, to be, to be clear, but how, you know, is it better than any other keyword in that case? So we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. So what I wanted to do uh, tonight, I'll, I'll bring it up. But uh, what, what I want to look at first is Allies of Necessity. Now, this is also an interesting discussion because I'm relatively certain that Allies of Necessity, the draft kit, I'm relatively certain that it's rotating out with Convergence. Now, I could be wrong on that and, you know, the, the powers that be will have to confirm that. Um, but, but it's interesting, right? Because I, I don't know the answer. And the reason is because in the past, like from an FFG standpoint, the draft kits have been tied to the block and not specifically a set, right? Like the, the rivals draft kit was not tied. It came out with legacies, but it was not tied to legacies. It was tied to the block, right? Same with the two player set. It was tied to the block. 
in this case, allies of necessity is tied to the convergence block, not necessarily convergence itself. So I, I think they're rotating allies of necessity out, um, but I'm not 100% sure. With that said, I wanted to just kind of real quick go through the allies of necessity set because I, I think overall this one's pretty low impact, right? I mean, remember losing, you know, the, the characters, I think we have to go under the assumption that for the most part, characters won't be reprinted. Um, you know, but if you if you look through this, like losing knighthood, pro like losing knighthood kind of stinks. But again, like I think Ahsoka was mostly the only one using that. Um, the the one that probably carries weight is this one, which is Grand Design. Um, there there are some decks that have taken advantage of this. The question is, was it just filling that two point slot? You know, like I, I think Afra, like new Afra, I think I think she misses that card or will miss that card, right? Uh, but if you look at the rest, the only other one that I see in here that they've basically promised us will continue to be in the game is Flank, right? It's it's already on the reprint list. Um, and we can check in a second. I don't actually think Flank is in Convergence. I think it didn't have to be because it was in this set, right? So, um, But the point is, if it rotates out, you lose Flank. So Flank will almost certainly be added to the reprint list. Um, if it isn't already, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but, you know, f fundamentally, I don't think we lose anything big. Um, losing Weed of Palace is actually, I mean, it didn't see a ton of play, but it kind of set a baseline. So losing Weed is interesting. But um, so like I said, I'm not 100% certain that we're losing the draft kit. But I'm pretty certain we're losing the draft kit. But again, I think it's, I think if it goes or if it stays, it's actually kind of, kind of the same. I mean, it's, it's not hugely relevant. Uh, convergence, on the other hand, uh, is... I mean, it's it's a big deal, right? So, uh, I do have this up so we can go click on some cards. But what I what I really wanted to hit on were some of the, you know, what I see as the significant losses. You know, calling them a major loss maybe isn't right, uh, but but they're significant. I mean, you know, take take an example like Forsaken here, right? Good old Forsaken. I mean, that's losing that is, and it, I'm not saying it needs to come back, right? But losing Forsaken, like, I mean, Forsaken has been kind of like one of those ever permanent cards, right? Especially when Motive went away. Forsaken definitely filled that slot. I mean, Forsaken was part of the reason that Motive was, I mean, because they were both Leros, right? So, I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? And then there's another one that I think is going to have more impact than people think, and that's this one, which is Sith Teachings. So it's just kind of been like one of those fundamental dark villain it's just kind of been like a fundamental villain staple. I mean, not necessarily staple, but more of like a baseliner, right? Of like, you know, if you're better than, you know, if, you, if you're looking for another ability, you kind of go with Sith Teachings. And if it's better, then you'd go with that and not Sith Teachings. But it's, it's really set the baseline on what an ability, what a two-cost ability should look like, right? I mean, you know, we'd all like to think that Neiman is the new baseline, which it kind of is, like two-cost Neiman, which is not rotating out quite yet away or away yet. Uh, but I think Sith Teachings has really set that baseline of um, what a two-cost ability would be, right? I mean, you know, think about it right now. It's basically Neiman and Force Fowler and, you know, maybe, maybe the, uh, what's the one that, Ray, what's the Apprentice one? Any, anyway, uh, Untamed Power, Untamed Power. But that's also in Spark But anyway, so Sith Teachings, I think, is important. Um, I do think people are going to miss Sinister Peace. I actually really like this card. Um, yeah, I, I like a Sinister Piece. I don't think it's coming back, um, but we'll see. Uh, probe is a card here that, I, I mean, the game's never not had a Probe. So I think for certain that stays on the, right, because when Curve Virtus goes away, if they don't choose to do it on the reprint list, it goes away. I think it'll be, on the, be left on the reprint list. Uh, Best Defense is a no-brainer. It's already on the reprint list as it exists today, but again, I, I think they're going to keep it. Uh, if we keep doing down Mega Blaster Troopers, losing this is significant. I don't think it stays. I don't think it does, um, but it's significant, right? So, I mean, yeah, can't ignore that one at all. Um, let's see. Let's keep going here. So the next the next big thing, right, getting into Villain Yellow. Um, and, and this is not just a Villain Yellow thing, but it kind of is, right? Is bounties and down, right? This, this whole set, aside from being tribal, was about the downgrades and you know the yeah the downgrade support i mean it introduced them it has a fair amount of stuff in here supporting that 
the characters go hand in hand with it. Um, so that's that that I could go either way on, right? Like, I think part of the problem, if let's let's say they don't, you know, and even even cards like hunt them down or whatever that support the downgrades, if they don't, because there are characters in Spark of Hope and um, Spark of Hope and Conver- uh, Con- CM, sorry, sp- spacing right now, covert missions. There are characters in those that still rely, still refer to downgrades, right? So I don't necessarily know if in the end, like once Convergence Block Road has, I don't know if like they necessarily have downgrades to the level that they do. But I think that there's going to have to be some sort of downgrade support carried forward. Otherwise, downgrades and downgrade support carried forward, specifically bounties. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of characters left hanging. Now, that may or may not matter, fair enough. Um, but I, I think that they do because I think they don't want to leave people stranded, right? So there's kind of that, that whole block there that is that is significant. Uh, next, I have, if we go down here, so uh, this one is big. I, I, I think this card's going to get reprinted. Uh, Discipline Mind, right? Spot a Jedi, remove not Jedi. I mean, it's just kind of like a blue staple, a you know, blue hero staple as it is right now. I think that one gets reprinted. Um, pretty much nothing else I think does in blue, uh, field medic is kind of an obvious one here because I mean, it is what it is. Oh, and then one I skipped that I actually, I don't remember if this one's on the reprint list or not, but defensive stance, uh, remember this was also, this was a awakening card got reprinted in convergence. It's kind of like one of those staple cards. I would think, I would think it would be smart for them to keep that on the reprint list. So I think we'll see that. Like I said, field medic. Um, next up I have on the stopping block is, um, yeah, I actually don't have anything from yellow hero except, I mean, flee the scene. I don't think, I don't think that's coming back, especially not with, I mean, I don't see easy pickings lasting like we talked about, but you know, with, with what yellow has, I don't think they can bring back. I don't think they can bring back flee, um, especially with dash, right? Uh, but Moxie, Moxie, I do think, I don't know if they will or they won't, but I I think it should be right. And the reason I think Moxie should be is because I don't see cunning making it in. So I think, and it's very clear, right? Moxie, Moxie was designed as the second more balanced cunning, whatever you want to call it. Right. So there's a place in this game for a cunning esque, a Moxie esque card. And I think that Moxie's better, well, not better, (laughs) but it's, a better card than cunning is right so i hope to see moxie come back um i do think that you know moxie has been significant and then not significant based on what meta you're in which is kind of funny about it and i think that's a sign of a good card right if it's always powerful and it drives stuff then maybe the card's too good but like i said it, it you know sometimes moxie's good sometimes it's not good depending on the meta and i like that right i like that a lot so um, i think maxi should be moxie should be in there okay uh, next we go. So in terms of blue, uh, we have, uh, use the force is also a reprint. Um, so I think that will carry, I mean, honestly, we could probably do without it. Like it really hasn't seen much play over the years of anything. Uh, something that I do think carries significant because of just the archetype that it fits into, especially with Jark High still being a thing for the next four sets, right? Yeah. For the next four set drops, Dark High is still going to be a thing. Um, losing Fatal Blow is actually a big part of that, right? Because most people play like one Fatal Blow. So I think losing that's a big deal. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fatal Blow get reprinted or move to the reprint list. But either way, losing Fatal Blow is is significant, is definitely significant. Yeah, keep going down. Uh, this automated defense... Um, this is something I foresee getting reprinted. I would think it should. Um, now, again, it's not as guaranteed as like a field medic or something like that, but it fits like, I, I think it makes sense to have it be reprinted as kind of like a staple card because like there's going to be droids in the future, right? And when I say that, I don't mean like C-3PO or 2 Chopper. There's going to be droids of some sort as like a side character or whatever in the future. Um, I think it makes sense. Maybe maybe just more for villain than anything. Like I think Afro needs it. So I, I think I think automated defense probably gets reprinted would be my guess. Um, next up, I have uh, where is it? Measure for measure. Uh, yeah, so measure for measure. I think 
I, 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 again, you, you can kind of see in my head here, like a lot of these staple, they're, they kind of became the new staples with subtypes, right? With the tribal theme, whatever you want to call it, they kind of became new staples. And like, I, I think Measure for Measure has a place because it kind of fits the trooper thing, right? Um, seize the Day. Um, I don't know about that one. Could go probably either way on that one. That one's kind of interesting. Um, but then Squad Tactics, I think we do see Squad Tactics because again, that's it's just a you know it's a continued staple, so I think we see squad tactics on there, for sure. Then uh, concert squad. So I don't know, I don't know if the powers that be like it or not. I I would like to see it get reprinted. Um, I think it does some pretty cool things um, in terms of trying to run like a leader trooper deck and thematic stuff like that. I will say that like it's kind of dirty with wedge right now, right? Like. He can pile it in. He can bring that in because Wedge is a leader, so it's kind of dirty with him. Um, so we'll we'll see we'll see what they decide on that. But again, I I'd like to see it, um, but we will we will see a three hundred. I love the gun, but I don't. I mean, there's enough stuff out there. I don't I don't think that stands a chance. Riot Shield. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do Riot Shield or not. I, I would think they would, but remember the, and I get it because this one's neutral, but um, armor plating. Armor plating is actually in, doesn't rotate out yet, it's in Spark of Hope because it came back with Django, but that's a reprint from Awakenings. So with those, like, I don't know, maybe they do like a hero version that supports Bo-Katan or something that's like a Mandalorian version that's like yellow. I don't know. Um, but I, I think losing, right? I mean, not everybody plays Riot Shield even if you have a trooper anymore, right? But I think that Riot Shield is has kind of become fundamental to destiny so we'll see what they decide to do there but i i think not having it available to your trooper package i think it's a big deal right i mean three three health for one is is a big deal uh electroshock no concern there that one's certainly on the list but it's it's absolutely coming back right i mean there's there's really no question there um so yeah those are oh i went need to go back to some cards um so another card that, like, I mean, let's be honest here, this one, right, binds all things. Um, like, this game can't, I mean, we need binds all things. Like, it's it's going to be there. It'll get it'll be in the reprinted list. Lightsaber's an interesting one. Let me scroll down so you can see it. But Lightsaber's an interesting card because it's from Awakenings, but, like, didn't see a ton of play back then, has been reprinted, still didn't see a ton of play. Do they waste time reprinting it? Probably not, but maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that one, but it it's kind of weird to not have that card. You know what I mean? But, like, nobody's really using it. Hasn't really ever. <laughs> I mean, so... Um, I, I did actually use it in like a couple, like one of my droid decks, right? With R2, because you can flip to the top side. I did, I did use it for that, but like that's pretty niche, right? I mean, by and large, it hasn't seen a ton of play. So you got that one on there. And then I don't know how I skipped this one. Uh, oh, because I got distracted with Conscript, but Tech Team, right? I mean, Tech Team will be in perpetuity, I would think, right? And then last one down here is uh, Where's Truce? There it is. There's Truce, right? Again, it's another one of those kind of staple Destiny cards. I can't see us going without. Now, going into kind of the, the neutral grays, I uh, wanted to talk a bit about back to therapy. So it, it kind of this kind of falls in the fatal blow type of thing, right? Like it's kind of the big, or not the big, but it's kind of like the big upgrades thing. So like I think this card should come back but I don't know that it should come back until like after Jarkai is gone. Um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of part of that. So like, I don't know, I don't know how they'll fall on that. Probably, I don't know, probably if they do Fatal Blow, they'll do Bacta and probably, I can't, probably they'll do both or none would be my guess, right? Because it's it's kind of the same mindset of like, do we want to support the, the wide strategy? I mean, Jarkai is good enough, right? But um, so, and actually to that end, one I hadn't written down, but I'm thinking about right now, I'm pretty sure custom bandoliers in this set, right? Like I'm pretty positive. Um, D down here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So custom bandoliers in this, like, you know, that's hero yellow, but again, it's, 
you know, I mean, there's been plenty of BDL deck done in the past using custom bandolier. I think it opens up like that one card opening up deck archetypes. Like I think that would be a wise one to keep, I think. And I think losing it takes options away. So that would probably be be a good one. Um, all right, so getting down in here, the one I was looking for is Near Miss. This is a card, um, again, it's kind of that tribal type thing. And it's one of those like bar setting cards. So I think Near Miss probably gets reprinted. Um, I don't think it gets reprinted over something like a flank, but I think there's a place for it. And like, you know, why not? Right. I mean, it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty good, um, overall. I mean, it's a pretty good card, right. In, ter in terms of like pretty well-designed card, right. I mean, it fits into the, you know, usually it's better with like a three wide type of thing, but you know, it's, if you're hurting for removal on something, you can always play near miss. I mean, the right deck, obviously. So. Um, yeah, and then the, I mean, we already know Mean Streets is go, going into the discussion about battlefields, and that's that'll pretty much do it. Um, there, there's only two of them. So Salt Flat, like Salt Flats, was a staple battlefield for so long. It's kind of fallen out of favor lately, but it kind of fits to what I was talking earlier with leader stuff, right? Like, I think this card should probably stay. Right. And like, if you're looking at the number of battlefields they have on the reprint list, if we're being realistic about it, like, shouldn't this one stay before Emperor's Throne Room or something? You know what I mean? So I would think Salt Flat stays. And then along those lines, like Military Camp, I don't know. I think they should keep Military Camp, but I could see them doing something similar for like other subtypes. Right. Um, I mean, I think it makes, I mean, I think it makes more sense for troopers because it's just kind of like, you know, troopers are supposed to be wide. I mean, we know they're not right in reality. They're not, but like, you know, the trooper subtype supposed to be like kind of wide use battlefield control type stuff, uh, action sheet. If you have the battlefield tactical mastery, you know, all the, all that jazz. Right. And I think military camp makes sense for troopers, but I could, I could see him playing with that somehow. Um, but, but regardless, I think that losing military, like people still use military camp. People still use salt flats. Not as much as they used to. Um, but, but I think the, I mean, at the very least, those going away are definitely in my uh, significant losses, significant impact category. Um, and I do think they should potentially come back. Now, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for my list. I do have one special note. Now, I, you know, I'm usually not big on the character reprints. Uh, but th there's two I want to mention. One of them is a no-brainer, I, I believe. I believe one of them is a no-brainer. And the other one I don't think is coming back, but should or is going to carry significant. In fact, and those, these are both in the red villain category. Uh, remember that our good old buddy, the Faust, was reprinted. Um, I th and in Convergence, I think, he, I, think the, I think the Faust has a place. Now, it's kind of interesting because they have the Snow Trooper, which basically just strictly bettered him. I mean, not in every sense, but kind of did, right? So I could see them not bringing Faust back, um, but I think I think for like posterity's sake, like I think they should. Um, so that's you know I, we'll see on that. Um, I do think losing Faust is not significant though, from a gameplay standpoint, because of, like I said with Snowtrooper, I mean they're not exactly the same, but they kind of are. And there's other there's other guys out there that are six and seven points for your color splash. Uh, this guy Wat Tambor. Again, I don't think he's coming back. I don't think many of these characters are coming back, nor should they. But Wat Tambor has maintained his not dominance, but he he's somebody that people go to even now, right? So like with all the power creep and stuff we've seen, this nine point baddie who can give you an extra wall on your red dice per turn has been significant, right, since he came out. And him going away does hurt support decks, or villain support decks. I mean, there's, there's zero question about it, right? Now, the nice thing about him going away is, like, they can now push red villain supports a little more in theory, right? Or I guess all red supports a little, you know, neutral and villain supports, they can push him a little bit now because you don't need to worry about it. But, like, you've kind of already got what you need, right? I mean, you've still got Blizzard and, and all that on all that good stuff, but... You know, Wat Tambor, yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys are picking up what I'm laying down, right? I mean, he's he's been a staple of, you know, that, he's been a staple of that archetype for 
since he's came out for two years now, and him going away is a is a loss, right, to to that archetype. People will adapt, but it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal. So, like I said, I, I don't see any other characters getting reprinted. I don't want to spend too much time on them. Palpatine going away is kind of funny because he's kind of not there anyway with the way Agro is. But uh, good friggin' riddance, like we're tired of that. Admiral's already gone. Now Admiral's actually in Spark of Hope. But, you know, it's that whole same conversation. So anyway, that's that's my list today. I, I know there was a lot to talk about because we had to run down like this whole set for the most part. But, you know, the, it's one of the things that's been kind of in the back of my head on, you know, I, I think that it being, I think Convergence Rotating Out is a big deal. Obviously, it's why we were talking about it. And I think it's potentially going to be overshadowed a little bit by the fact that, like, you know, if Ancient and stuff rolls out, I think people are going to be like, man, losing Ancient, losing overconfidence, losing, you know, easy pickings, losing all this other stuff. That really changed the meta. I mean, it will, true. Um, but there's a lot of, like, the more nuanced things, I think, from Convergence that I think will fly under the radar just because of what the reprint list had done to the meta. So... I, th- I think it's important to kind of sit back and look at that and see kind of how the, you know, the tier 1.5 cards or, you know, the, the kind of the underlying stuff that can affect some of the decks that might not enter into that top rotation, but kind of still impact that top rotation in its direct way. That's why I think it was worth having this uh, discussion overall. So, um, you know, in terms of what we'll see on the reprint list, that's, you know, I was talking about what I do think should be reprinted and what I don't or what I'm hoping for. And like, you know, that's part of the conversation but that's, you know, that's not, I, this isn't necessarily like angling for these cards or something. And I mean, they're going to do what they want to do anyway, right? And as well, they should. But um, in terms of looking at what we're going to be missing and what needs backfilled, I think it's a worthwhile activity, um, even if it only just lets us know what we're losing and what we should be looking for come the next set. So uh, I think that'll do, do it tonight or do it this morning. Um, I do hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back next Monday. We've seen some spoilers just before I shot this or a couple hours before I shot this. We saw the spoilers from Echo Base. So we have my spoilers early in the week and the Echo Base spoilers. So we've got a little bit to talk about. Hopefully we'll get one more of the weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday for kind of a, a spoiler recap of what we've got, kind of start putting stuff into context. And uh, we'll really start going from there. But I wanted to kind of close this out before we went into spoiler season and kind of, you know, like I said, teach us what we're going to be learn, losing and uh, what we can look for going forward. So anyway, thank you very much, folks, for tuning in, as you always do on Friday or Friday night or Saturday morning, whatever it may be. I really appreciate it. Um, again, make sure hit those, you know, a lot of us forget to hit the likes and stuff. I really appreciate the resurgence on the likes we've had because it helps us, helps us get up there. Like comments, helps other people find the game. Uh, we've had, we literally have had people make comments about, where can I find to play the game? Um, that's been good, right? That's a good thing. So keep helping out there, um, all working together to make this happen. So thank you, folks. Thanks for being you. Keep playing Star Wars Destiny and go Commando.